Crypto markets have absolutely exploded in the last month. Among the leaders, this pump has been none other than Ethereum, the number two cryptocurrency by market cap and the number one leading smart contract platform. It's all 45% move in just 30 days. And one of the biggest reasons for this is that we have seen a historic spot ETF filing for Ethereum by none other than the world's largest institutional asset manager, BlackRock. Needless to say, this is huge and will likely be a big catalyst for Ethereum to explode well beyond its prior all-time high. But wait, you know, what's going on here? Like, what is an ETF? Why is it such a big deal? Why would it cause the ETH price to go up? You know, how high could it go? When could this happen? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna break down for you in detail today. You know, as a blockchain developer myself, who's been in this space ever since 2017 through multiple crypto cycles and a long time Ethereum holder myself. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish, get ahead of the next crypto explosion, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So in just the last week, we saw a historic filing for an Ethereum spot ETF from none other than BlackRock, you know, the world's largest institutional asset manager. So I'm going to break down everything in this video, but again, none of this is designed to be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information, but let's just break it down. So what is an ETF in case you're not familiar? Well, ETF just stands for Exchange Traded Fund. So basically, it's a way for you that you can purchase shares in a fund on a, you know, like a traditional brokerage website that represents something else besides, you know, the thing you're buying underneath. So you might have heard of an index fund where you basically purchase a share in the index fund and that, you know, represents a lot of different stocks that make up that. And you're basically getting broad exposure to the broader stock market through purchasing those shares. That's a really popular example. Now, the whole idea is basically creating crypto ETFs where people can purchase shares in this in these ETFs where they're not actually buying the actual cryptocurrency underneath. Now, we've seen this happen with other assets in the past like gold, okay? Where the gold ETF went live around 2003 and what happened to the price of gold after was tremendous. It skyrocketed after the ETF was created and there's lots of hope that a very similar type of thing could happen to crypto. Well, why is that? Well, BlackRock is the one that is filing these ETFs for first for Bitcoin and now for Ethereum. So in case you're not familiar with them, they're the world's largest institutional asset manager. And so you have to understand that it's institutions that want exposure to the cryptocurrency asset class. And one of the preferred vehicles for them to do this is through ETFs, okay? And that, that's going to make it a lot easier for them to participate in it rather than just going out and like buying cryptocurrency on a website like Coinbase or Binance. They're not going to do this. And one of the reasons why is because institutions are buying cryptocurrency in size in a way that you or I can't. Let's say a billion dollars of cryptocurrency. You're not going to do that, you know, how we buy crypto. You're going to do it a different way and ETFs unlock that potential. And so we've been talking about ETFs, you know, in crypto for the better part of the last six to nine months, because earlier this year, you know, lots of people have been filing for uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs, but then BlackRock dropped their name in the hat and people were like, okay, we really have to pay attention. So why is that? Well, number one, BlackRock is the largest institutional asset manager on the face of the earth with $10 trillion worth of assets under management, okay? And then the other reason is they basically have a 0% failure rate, uh, or said another way, roughly 100% success rate at getting their ETF applications approved. So once they've got the name in the hat, it looks very likely that we will get this Bitcoin spot ETF that we've been talking about basically for six months. Now, flip the script to what happened last week. BlackRock also applies for an Ethereum spot ETF, which is absolutely insane. I've been talking about this ever since they put out their, you know, Bitcoin one, but now they've gone for Ethereum. And ever since that happened, Ethereum broke well above the $2,000 range and has held that ever since this news broke at the time of recording this video. So why would an ETF be a big deal for, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Those are the two big ones that have applications in the pipeline now. Well, One of the reasons, like I was talking about, is because of this institutional demand. Institutions can buy cryptocurrency in size in a way that you or I can't. Let's say a billion dollars, okay? If a billion dollars flows into crypto, it's a significant amount of buying pressure. 
Okay, so there's lots of people who can spend a billion dollars on cryptocurrency and from institutions in the way that individuals can't or won't. All right. And so on top of that, you have to understand BlackRock has $10 trillion worth of assets under management. And so the crypto market's, you know, close to $1.5 trillion that I record this video. And if 1% of all the assets in BlackRock went into the crypto markets, then that can move the needle massively. Their asset center management are like seven to 10 times the size of the entire crypto market cap now. All right. So you also have to understand that BlackRock has massive incentives for their ETS, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, to perform well. They don't want to launch an ETF and then watch the crypto market tank. Okay. So they have incentives to make that perform well. The other reason is BlackRock has massive sales teams, all right, who want to get the asset center management. They have $10 trillion worth of assets sitting there. They have large institutional clients, you know, and they have sales forces. You can talk to them and talk about, hey, here's these ETFs. Here's the crypto exposure. Here's where we think this is going. And they have incentive to get this under management because of fees. Okay. They collect fees from getting people under the, into the ETFs and for keeping them inside of them. And so there's strong incentives for them to take all this new capital that's not in the crypto space at all and bring it in. And so that's why I think it'd be a major deal for the cryptocurrency prices themselves. Now, what does that mean for other cryptocurrencies besides just Bitcoin or Ethereum? Well, I think it means a lot of things. So number one, if we just have a Bitcoin ETF and just an Ethereum ETF, I think that's going to bring a lot of new capital in the space that's going to expand out on the risk curve to other cryptocurrencies. And we can see, you know, the entire crypto markets really lift in result, right? Basically all ships rise in this situation. But I don't think it stops there. Okay. I don't think that's the only reason why I think this would be good for the broader crypto markets, which is I don't think we're going to stop at just a Bitcoin and an Ethereum ETF. Okay. It's very possible that we'll start to see applications for other coins. All right. I don't exactly know which ones those are going to be at the time recording this video, but it wouldn't surprise me if a year from now we had at least a dozen different cryptocurrencies with applications in the pipeline for these ETF filings. Maybe they're not approved yet, but that would cause a lot of optimism in the space as well. So another thing about is you can start to create new types of ETF products rather than ones that support just one single underlying cryptocurrencies. So at the beginning of this video, I talked about, you know, index funds, like it's really popular for people to buy, you know, uh, S&P 500 index fund or like some other type of index fund in the stock market, which is just a weighted basket of different stocks where they don't have to pick individual ones and they get a broader exposure to the stock market going up over time. You can start to see similar type of things how the crypto markets, if we have multiple different assets that are included in ETFs, they could be bundled into these other diversified ETFs that people will be hungry for too. So they don't feel like they have to pick different cryptocurrencies. All right. So that being said, you know, when will these ETFs potentially go live? Okay. Well, BlackRock uh, just talked about they're increasingly confident that the SEC will approve its spot Bitcoin ETF in January. Okay. So that's not very far away at the time of recording this video. And if that, you know, goes live, you know, that's the approval. That's not the go live date. But if they get it ready to go live pretty soon after that, then we can start to see capital flow into the Bitcoin market uh, via the ETF, you know, within this, within three months from now, basically. Okay. And so who knows what the Ethereum ETF, does it take the same amount of time as the spot Bitcoin ETF did to go through? We see them get approved at the same time. Nobody's got a crystal ball to know that information for sure, but we are seeing people jump in the crypto space to get ahead of this. And so that being said, if people are front running it and the entire crypto space sort of shift towards of a bullish, more of a bullish bias, how long will it take us to break all time highs and where could we go? Like how high could the numbers go for these particular cryptocurrencies that have ETF approvals? So let's just do some speculation here. Okay. None of this is designed to be financial advice. I'm not forecasting this as an official prediction on this channel or anything like that, but let's just do some basic reasoning. Okay. Let's assume that an asset like Bitcoin, you know, has, you know, diminishing returns over time. So, you know, it's not going to go up 10 X this cycle if it only went up like three X last cycle. So, you know, Bitcoin was, let's just call it roughly three X the last cycle. Let's say you could put in a two X this cycle. Well, then that basically would be, you know, about $60,000 um, you know, 2X would be $120,000. So let's call it 120 to 130. Let's add some more variation, 100 to 150. That seems to be a very common view um, based on this. Now, the ETFs could throw a complete wrench in this circuit and maybe we don't have diminishing returns. Maybe we actually put in a similar level of return this cycle that we did last cycle or even more, all right? That's also a possibility on the table. But what about Ethereum, okay? So one thing I think it's unique about Ethereum with the ETFs 
is that, you know, you can get price appreciation from Ethereum, but you can also get yields from the assets themselves. So that yield can be baked into the ETF, but it could also be a way where it's not baked in the ETF and people get to capitalize upon the yield that they stake for the, e the thing that goes, you know, uh, underneath. So that being said, I think we can see a situation where it becomes even more explosive for something like Ethereum. But if we go by our basic model of having diminishing returns over time, all right, and, you know, let's say Ethereum follows a very similar trajectory of Bitcoin of only putting in like a three to four X in the last cycle, that would put Ethereum, the cryptocurrency, you know, up at like, you know, 15 to $20,000, okay? So th that's kind of the projection there. Now, I'm not saying ETH is going to hit fifteen dollars to $20,000 necessarily. I, I, you know, be, it'd be great if it went more than that, right? I'm trying to say that in this video. But I think it's very possible that we see ETH, you know, make a move towards 10 k which is one of the major targets from last cycle, and actually hit it this time, especially if we have support from ETFs like BlackRock. And so those are some of my general thoughts on the situation. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are we going to see a spot Ethereum ETF approved at the same time as the Bitcoin ETF? Is the Bitcoin one actually going to get improved in January? Is Bitcoin going to actually make new all-time highs? Is it going to go to 150K? Is it going to go 120K? Is it going to go way beyond that? What about Ethereum? Is it going to 2X, 3X? Is it going to 10X? I want to hear from you. And whenever you're done, you know, definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you want to get ahead of the next crypto explosion, uh, then I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, you really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Adaptiversity.